Hello, beautiful moms. My name is Alexis Patterson. I attend Grace's Van Dyke location where I lead a beautiful Monday night small group. Um, I am the wife of an amazing man who happens to be my best friend. I'm truly grateful for his love and support. Um, I'm also the mother of two. My oldest is Peyton, Her, um, she's 12. She is so sweet, so considerate, so loving. Um, just a beautiful young girl inside and out and I'm so grateful for her. And then I have my little Preston, who I often call my Velcro. He's four, he's always stuck to me, but he's so much fun, so curious, um, and just a joy of my life. So um, just a little bit about me. I'm originally from Indianapolis, Indiana, um, home of the Indianapolis Colts, the Indy 500, and I always like to say terribly bipolar weather, which is why we made Florida, uh, Tampa, Florida our home about nine years ago. Um, I just wanna say that I'm so honored to share your attention today with some amazing women who have shared such great messages before me. So thank you for allowing me to have your attention and your time today. I wanna to start us off in prayer before going into the message. Heavenly Father, I am so grateful, so thankful for this opportunity today. Thank you for allowing your Holy Spirit to dwell amongst us. Thank you for your fellowship, your wisdom, your kindness, your heart your truth. Father, we just come to you with our hearts and, and we want to learn more and more about how to be faithful mothers um, the way you've designed us to be. I ask that you touch every woman here um, and every woman online that hears the sound of my voice, God. I pray that you bring them encouragement. I pray that you bring them grace and mercy. And your holy name we pray in Jesus' name, amen. All right, amen. So I would love to take you back with me um, just about four months ago, if you will. And um, this is like during the height of COVID and I uh, did a Chick-fil-A run the quarantine way. So I downloaded um, and, and I'm sorry, I placed my order online through my app and did the order online pickup, you know, at the, sta um, at the station in Chick-fil-A and picked it up, got back home, distributed everybody's food, and as we're sitting at the table, um, my four-year-old, again, Preston, he's so excited for his toy. That's his favorite thing. But Preston knows that he cannot get his toy until after he's eaten his food. So he chows down on his six-piece kid's meal, chicken nugget meal, and he, I, I'm watching him from across the table, and he eagerly reaches for his toy. So he's eating so he can get it. So he's playing with his toy and I'm watching him as he's like pulling at it and he's tugging on it and he's like looking at it and tinkering with it and I realize that he can't figure out like what this toy actually does and how to actually make it work so after watching him I said hey son why don't you hand that over to me so that I can help you figure out how to work this toy and he says oh no 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 I got it mom I got it so I'm like, okay, and I can guess this from Preston. He's so independent, of course. You cannot tell a four-year-old but the 12-year-old sister that he is not a big boy. So I let him try to figure it out a little bit longer, and I'm watching him, and he's still tugging, and now he's starting to grunt. Like, he's getting extremely frustrated, and he's grunting, and he's still pulling and tinkering with it. And so I offered again. I said, son, why don't you let me help you figure it out? To his reply, mom, I can do it. I got this. So I, I stepped back and I said, okay. And I'm watching him for a few more minutes because this carries on for a couple more minutes. And finally, I just sternly said, and I reached across the table, I said, son, hand me the toy so that I can help you figure it out. So stubbornly, he hands it over to me. And of course, effortlessly, I show him how to work the toy. And in that moment, I remember feeling like, does he, does this kid not know that I've been here before, that I understand how this toy works, that I can help him, and that I've been watching him struggle all this time? If he would have just trusted me and given me the toy, he could have been playing with that toy 10 minutes ago and having a good time, but he didn't. And that's when the Holy Spirit settled in me and said, he reminded me, the Holy Spirit reminded me in that moment saying, you are much like your son in that moment with God. I have been that stubborn child with God, not wanting to hand anything over. And, and with my actions, I've constantly told God, like, you know, during my struggles, now I, I got this, I can do this. Lord, I can figure this out. And all the while, 
I imagine God sitting across from me, just as I was watching my son struggle and thinking, when is she gonna reach out to me and help me and let me help her communicate better with her husband? When is she going to trust me with those complicated parenting moments? Doesn't she know that I have the answers to her next career move? And in that moment, I was like, wow. And the Holy Spirit also enabled me to show my son the same grace that God showed me, knowing that I've been that kid before. I've been that stubborn child of God. So, you know, we often get in these moments where we can feel like we can, when we feel like we can handle it on our own. Um, but I want to turn your attention to Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 29, where Jesus states in that moment, he says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take upon my yoke, and you will learn from me. For I am gentle, and I am humble in heart. You will find rest for your souls. Ladies, life can be challenging. Parenting, motherhood gets extremely complicated. But we, our Father says, lay it here. Rest, find rest in me. Trust me to fight your battles. I don't know about you, but I, who knows that we serve a faithful and trustworthy God. And all he wants in every moment is for us to depend on him in all of our ways. Um, I encourage you to seek God, you know, when you're, when you're needing the help and when you're um, struggling because he's waiting. He's waiting for you. And just as I waited for my son to hand over his struggles with me, God's doing the same for you. He never meant for us to figure these things out alone. He never wanted us to do life apart from him. So I want to dig just a little bit deeper in Matthew 11:28, 28, um, verse, I'm sorry, verse 28 through 29, because I did notice that Jesus gave us some really great instructions. And the first thing that he said is, come to me. Jesus wants us to be close, ladies. He wants us to believe in him, to, to, uh, to receive him, to confess to him, and to accept him. And the second thing that he asks us to do is to take upon his yoke. He says, take upon my yoke. And I don't know if you are familiar with what a yoke is. I had to look it up myself. So, um, But a yoke is a wooden board or frame usually uh, put around the neck of oxen so that they can carry or pull a heavy load. But unlike that oxen's load, Jesus' load of discipleship is, is for us to submit to him to give him our problems. He wants us to hand it over him, turn it over all the control of our lives over to him. So right here in that moment, Jesus is saying, let's make an exchange. Let me take on your heavy burden and let me give you the rest. Let me give you peace by your submission to me. Now, ladies, that doesn't mean that everything's always gonna be easy, right? But it does mean that we can rely on our Father to do the heavy lifting. And number three, he says, learn from me. Now, we know that Jesus is a teacher. He's often referred to a teacher. Um, we can read in countless parables, you know, and Jesus is always teaching us things. And I know that, you know, Jesus was put here, he was sent here so that we could learn his ways and also learn the ways of our Heavenly Father. So this process really enables us um, for our sanctification process where we become more and more like Jesus every day. He literally trains us in his ways, ladies. So I love that. So I simplified it though for you. So this is the cool part. So it's as easy as one, two, three is what I'm calling it. It may not always seem easy, but if you can keep it this easy in your mind, it'll help you out. So number one, seek Jesus first. Number two, submit to Jesus. Hand over all your worries, all your cares, cares and your, you know, all of your burdens, your confessions, just give them over to him, okay? And the last thing is number three, learn from him by listening to him. Go to him in prayer. Um, read the word of God, okay? And, and so as he gives, we see that Jesus gives us instructions, right? And we've, we've gone over that, our, our one, two, three, but I also want to narrow in where Jesus describes, he reminds us of his character because he says that he is gentle and humble in heart. 
And when I think of humility at its highest, I think of what Jesus did for us on the cross where he died for our sins. He literally exchanged our sins and our burdens so that we could be free, so that we could be re so we could reestablish a relationship with our heavenly Father, casting out, I mean, paying the price for us and, and, and giving us freedom. And that there's no more humility than that. And then the second thing that he says is, that I'm reminded of is his, hum, um, his gentleness. And when I think about his gentleness, I think about in Luke 7, there's a passage where Jesus raised the widow's son from the dead. And he did that with compassion for her because he knew that that son of hers was all she had. And without her son, she, could, she would most likely end up being poor and be forgotten and not have a means to a way because she didn't have anything else. And that's the kind of Jesus that we have at our fingertips, guys. And that makes me so excited to know that that's the same Jesus who says, let me, let me carry the burden for you. Cast your cares onto me. So I, I do want to encourage you also to take it a step further. So yes, apply it to yourselves, but I, I, th I would encourage you to use it with your children as well. And if you can find that appropriate way to share i mean obviously that you know you know what's best for you but for an example if there's something that your family's trusting god for and you know and you have a little one that's able to understand a little bit about that um feel free to share that like hey this is we're trusting god for you know x y and z and and as a family pray for those things and then when god and when jesus you know makes this all happen you point back up and say look at what jesus did for us look at how he blessed our family we went to him and he's and he provided for us i know that you know i do have a 12 year old and that does actually work really well with her um she i had some things that i you know appropriate things that i was willing to share with her that i was struggling with and ladies she started praying for me and then she would send me encouraging text messages of scripture and let me know that I'm not alone and that God is with me. And there is no more beautiful thing than to see your children accepting Jesus and, and, and that sign of worship and that he dwells in their hearts. The Holy Spirit is with them as well. And so, you know, if you find that appropriate thing, just definitely use those three steps with them on a very appropriate level it definitely would transform your lives at home with your children and you really become a real role model for them. So I really hope you find motivation in, in going to God first and seeking him through those tough times. It is extremely easy to start relying on ourselves through these hard moments or a best friend or social media or a self-help book or you know whatever you run to, right? But we, we know that never sustains us. It never really does the job. So I encourage you to look no further than to Jesus. We do find our true rest in him and in him alone. Ladies, I pray that you find peace in casting all your cares onto him. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for your time. Bye.